What's up YouTube, Jeff back again today, another very exciting Samsung video for you guys. Today, for all of you who've purchased a Galaxy S23 Ultra, I'm gonna be doing my first 10 things to do video. These are my tips for the first 10 things you should do as soon as you get the phone out of the box. If you haven't bought one already, I will have the link below to get the best deal. You can also get my free mystery box that has a free case in it, uh, a free cleaning kit, a free phone stand. If you use the link in the description, you can check that out. But let's get right into the tips. I'm using a Google Keep document today, but there'll also be chapters below so you can follow around very simply. So the first tip is to make sure that you've set up your security settings. And you probably already did this during the setup that the phone walks you through. But if you go into the settings and go to security and privacy, I do have a very nice tip if you're using fingerprint, which most of you probably are. If you go into the biometric section, I don't like face recognition myself. Personally, I prefer fingerprint only. But that, of course, is a choice. You should have one or the other enabled. But if you go into fingerprints, it's really a good idea to set up more than one of the same fingerprint. So what I do is I use my right thumb the most. So fingers one and three are actually both my right thumb. That helps with the accuracy if you scan it multiple times. I've done this on every phone I've ever owned. Some people say it doesn't matter, but I can notice a pretty significant difference if I don't do it. Of course, finger two is just my other thumb. There's other ones you might want to set up if you are getting into your phone like this a lot with your, you know, on the table, you might use your index finger, but I typically am picking it up. So I set the two thumbs as mine. I highly recommend the redundancy. There's also some other nice thing in here you might want to change, you know, like fingerprint always on, scan your fingerprint even when the screen is off. That's one of the best features of the S23 Ultra and any Samsung phone with the in-display fingerprint sensor is that you can actually scan it with the screen off. Okay, let's go into the next thing. The next thing is the display settings. Display settings, you'll also find in the main settings panel. If you go up here to the settings panel, scroll up to display. There's actually a lot of things to talk about in here. First of all, you can choose if you're using light or dark mode. I choose just to match my wallpaper. You can also choose to turn on auto brightness if you want. I always leave auto brightness on. Uh, if you want to, you can also crank it up to the maximum. Of course, it'll drain your battery life. Uh, motion smoothness, you can choose either adaptive or standard. Standard will give you better battery life, but it won't be as buttery smooth when you're scrolling through your Twitter or your Instagram feed. I recommend adaptive. I mean, you bought a phone that's got all these features. Why not use them? Uh, if you scroll down, you can change your screen mode from vivid to natural. You can also change the white balance, which is just an amazing feature. It's one of the best things that you know Samsung has. If you don't like the way the display is cal calibrated, you can change that very easily. Go down to screen resolution, pick your resolution. Again, FHD plus is a great option, but you bought a phone that cost this much money, why not use WQHD Plus? I think, you know, with the new processor and the S23 Ultra, the battery life is gonna be just fine. So I don't have to worry about that too much. You can change how long the screen times out. You can change whether or not you wanna show the camera cut out or not with different apps. Uh, and then there's also these two options, which I highly recommend looking at at the bottom. Accidental touch protection and touch sensitivity. If you go in here, Accidental touch protection will make sure you don't accidentally touch your phone when it's in your pocket or your bag, accidentally call someone, text somebody. Touch sensitivity is something I would recommend turning on if you're using a screen protector. I never use tempered glass or regular screen protectors, but my wife does use tempered glass screen protectors on her phone, and so she always turns this on, and it really makes a big difference because if you have a screen protector on, sometimes it might not respond to the touch as nicely. Okay, so that is display settings. We're gonna stay right here though to go into the navigation settings. So if you scroll up here, actually I missed it, go to navigation bar, still inside the display settings. This one's so important, it deserves its own uh, sort of section. You can choose between buttons and swipe gestures. So basically buttons is the old school Android way of navigating around your phone. You're gonna have a back button, you're gonna have a home button, and you're gonna have a recent apps button at the bottom here. And you'll be able to get around your phone using that. Uh, if you want to use a more modern option, what I would call a more modern option is the gestures option. That's what Apple currently has on the iPhone. And that allows you to swipe left or right to go back, hold up like this, and then hold to go to recent apps, just like so. And then you can also swipe up to go home. So you can also choose if you want to show a gesture hint, that's the little line down here. Show button to hide keyboard if you're inside an app using the keyboard. And you can also block gestures when you're using the S Pen. So you should try both of these, if, especially if you're new to Android, see which one you like the best, see which one fits your general style, and then pick that one. I like gestures personally. The next thing is to change the app grid size. This is very simple. You can do it from the home screen, just long press, go down here, actually my keep widget there is covering it, go to settings, go up here to where it says home screen app grid, 
and you can rearrange the apps on your home screen using different grid sizes. You can choose, you know, I've got five by five, four by five, four by six, five by six, depending on how many apps you want on the home screen. Obviously, the more apps you have, the smaller the icons will be, so keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing you can do is change your folder grid. There aren't as many options, it's just three by four or four by four. That way, if you're someone who likes to have folders on the home screen, then you can choose how the apps display and how fine the grid is inside the folders. You guys can see I don't use a lot of folders on my main home screen. And then over here, you can see that I've got smart suggestions and some other widgets. So I don't really keep a lot of folders on there, but if it's something you do, definitely take a look at that setting as well. The next two are also there in the home settings, which is swipe down for notification panel and also uncheck, a very important one. If you go to settings again here on the home screen, scroll down a little bit and you'll see the option to add new apps to the home screen. This has been enabled by default for the last, I don't know how many years. We'll see if they enable it on all the carrier devices this year as well. But turn this off. It's very annoying because every time you download a new app, it's going to add it directly to your secondary home screen. That basically turns your phone into an iPhone. So unless you like that, which I assume if you switch to Samsung, maybe you don't like iPhone, you're giving something new a try, I would recommend turning that off. The other feature, which is right here, swipe down for notification panel, allows you to open the notification panel by swiping down anywhere. So typically, you can only swipe down up here at the top to get the notification panel, but if you turn that feature on, you can swipe down anywhere on the home screen, in the middle, at the top, at the bottom. This is obviously very helpful because this is a very large phone, particularly it's a very tall phone, and so you're gonna wanna be able to turn this feature on to always get access to your notifications. I got one for Twitter right there. I can easily swipe down and get right into it. All right, so up next is wallpaper and lock screen customization. There's a couple ways you can do this. I'll show you the first one by long pressing on the home screen. Go down to wallpaper and style. From here, you can browse your wallpapers in your gallery and set any of those, as well as any of the default ones, as your wallpaper. You can also download themes from the Galaxy Store, like video wallpapers for your lock screen, which I'll talk about in a future video. So definitely subscribe to the channel if you wanna see that tip in the future. Now, once you choose your wallpaper, and I actually forgot to do this when I changed my wallpaper, you can also change the color palette that shows your quick settings and all the other icons. And uh, mine's blue now, so I'm gonna change it to blue. And it'll apply that palette to your quick settings that matches your wallpaper. So you can see now, when I swipe down, I've got blue quick settings. Looks really, really nice. Now on the lock screen side, where you can also access wallpapers, if you long press on your lock screen, like so, put in your fingerprint or your pattern, it'll take you to the lock screen editor. Now you see it says I have Lockstar running at the bottom and uh, that's a additional customization module that's available through Samsung's Good Lock. Stay tuned for that at the end of the video and I will talk about those advanced features in another video in the future. So again, make sure you subscribe to check that out. So you can change your wallpapers here just like we saw in the menu before, it's the same menu. You can change what you see on the lock screen, your notifications, where they appear, how the clock appears, you can change the style of the clock widget, if you do have Lockstar, which is through GoodLock, you can change the options a little more finely. You can change which quick apps you have, and you can also change the text at the bottom. I keep my business email there for YouTube, uh, but you can put whatever text you want there. This is really new to One UI, starting with One UI 5.0. It's a great way to edit your lock screen, something that Samsung made that's really intuitive, and uh, I really do enjoy it. So you can see now when I apply the changes, now it goes back to this other wallpaper on the lock screen, and then I still have the one that I changed before for my home screen. Okay, next, moving and rearranging apps. So particularly if you're coming from an iPhone, you're probably used to the fact that the iPhone forces you to put certain apps in certain places, and that's really annoying to me, specifically as an Android Samsung user. On Android, you can basically move the apps wherever you want. So if I wanna put the camera app right here and the other apps down here, I can do that. Apple doesn't let you do that. You can put one app on a screen if you want. You can put it in any position on the grid that you want. But Samsung lets you do even more cool things. Let's say that I wanna move all these apps to another home screen, like way over here. What I can do is I can actually long press, select the app, select all of these apps, then I can long press again, and it actually drags this whole entire bundle of apps over here, and I can then paste them, and it'll put them in that same spot. So you can see here, if I do it again, I can select one, two, three, four, five, long press again, drag them back over here, and paste them right back there on my home screen where I had them before. Moving and rearranging apps on Android, particularly on Samsung, is so nice. And there's a lot of other stuff you can do as well directly from that settings menu. 
you can go in here, you can mess around. Like if you go into the info section, you can change in the defaults. You can see how much data it's using. There's so much information that you really don't get at a glance on an Apple device. And this is something that's gonna make it easier to customize your home screen, to make it easier for you to use this device on a day-to-day -day basis. Next thing is modes and routines. And uh, this is something that's built in again, that's new with One UI, starting with One UI 5.0. If you go up to modes and routines, there's a lot of modes and routines that are here by default. And uh, they're sleep, driving, exercise, relax, and work. Uh, I use the sleep routine. I haven't set any of the other ones up yet, but it's something for you to check out because some of them might be ones that you wanna use that I don't. Now, in terms of routines, I've shown you guys a couple different ones that I use in the past. One of them that I showed in a previous video that I feel like is very, very useful is that you can actually go in here and turn on the ability to press a single side button and it automatically starts recording the voice recorder on your phone. So if you're in a dangerous situation, you just press the button, even with the screen off, it starts recording. I made a cool video on that. It's pretty long though. I'll drop the link below if you wanna check it out. But that's the kind of stuff you can do with Bixby routines is you can really change the way you use your device and automate a lot of processes with your device. Again, something that Apple has this ability, but it's a lot more basic. Samsung makes it more robust and a lot more advanced. The next thing is Bixby text call. This is a very important one. And starting with One UI 5.1, once the Galaxy S23 Ultra is officially available on February 17th, this will be available in English. Currently, it's still only available in Korean. I guess they're going to flip the switch once you know that does happen. If you go into settings inside your phone, you're going to see when you get your Galaxy S23 Ultra, at least here in the US, this might be different in other regions. I don't know. So I should say definitely in the US, go to Bixby Text Call. You can see right now it's only available for transcription in Korean at the bottom. This will be available in English. This is a basically like Google's call screen feature. This will have Bixby, which is the automated voice assistant for Samsung, answer your call, ask who's calling, get information, take a transcript of the call, and you can even set up quick responses of what you wanna to say to the person. So as you're reading the transcript in real time, you can press the responses and you never have to pick up the phone. This is great for screening spam calls. Everybody gets so many spam and scam calls these days. You can use this to your advantage. I've been testing it since it was in beta on the Korean side, but it's gonna be awesome to have this in English and the S23 Ultra brings that feature. Make sure you turn this on because you're gonna to wanna to use this on your new phone. And the last one is downloading GoodLock. Now you've seen all the basic tips I have for setup so far in this video. Those will get you up and running. To take it to the next level, you're gonna to wanna to go to the Samsung Galaxy Store and download Samsung's application. This is a Samsung app, it's not a third party app, called GoodLock. GoodLock allows you to enable all of these different suites of additional apps that take the customization and usability of your phone to the next level. If you subscribe to my channel, you guys will see over the course of the next couple months, I'm gonna cover every single one of these modules. They let you use your phone better in a one-handed way, take better control of your notifications, use your edge panels better, even customize the Bixby routines to a further level, get more out of your camera, and so much more. So you definitely wanna download this, start playing with it, Stay tuned to the channel for future videos, and we will go through every single good lock module that there is in detail. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe for more great Samsung content. I cover nothing but Samsung content on this channel, so if you have a Samsung device and want to learn more, this is the place for you. Again, check out my links below if you haven't purchased the phone yet. You can get a free mystery box. If you use my link, all you have to do is verify your order. The details are below. Appreciate you guys checking it out, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.